Competition is a natural phenomenon occurring in our daily lives. It can be found almost every day of our lives such as competition for sports, dancing, singing, and academics. We as humans are used to these types of competitions in the modern world. But what if we go back to the old age where we don't have technology and we still live as cavemen? What would our competition look like? It would probably be just like animals, fighting and hunting for food. Competition in all organisms occurs when individuals use a common resource that becomes short in supply relative to the number of individuals that need it. It can either be a direct or indirect interaction that leads to a change in fitness of the organisms involved. Species interactions such as this form the basis for many ecosystem properties and processes like nutrient cycling and food web. There are different types of competitions, such as the intraspecific and interspecific competition, but today we'll only focus on the intraspecific competition. Intraspecific competition is the competition between individuals of the same species or co specifics. It only happens when there is a shortage of resources for growth, survival, and reproduction. An example would be trees that grow very close together for sunlight and soil nutrients. There are two responses that a population of species does when resources are limited. One of them is scramble competition. It is when growth and reproduction resources are distributed fairly to all individuals in a population. Another one is the contest competition. It is when a particular strong individual claims their resources and does not share it with others. Usually, a species only shows one type of response competition. These are scramble species and contest species depending on the type of competition they participate in. Some species may utilize both in different stages of its life. Example, insects undergo scramble competition during the larval stages but undergo contest competition when they're adults due to the population decline. Another example of scramble competition are found in horseshoe crabs. They practice scramble competition polygyny, which results to large reproduction rates and higher species survival. Contest competition results in a far more stable population dynamics than scramble competition because the latter results in a periodic or chaotic population dynamics. These two types of competitions are studied and may be the reason of aggressive and collaborative personality in terms of social behavior in animals and mostly humans. There are also two types of interspecific competition or competition between individuals of the same species. Most of the time, competing organisms does not directly interact with each other but only respond to the level of resource availability left by other individuals. This competition can usually be found in large herbivores. Zebras, for instance, their grazing and the amount of grass they consume indirectly affects the amount of grass other zebras will eat. On the other hand, in plants, it happens when trees take up water and indirectly affects the availability of water for other plants. This competition is called the exploitation competition. There are also species who directly interact with other organisms of the same species through aggressive behavior and dominance over the others. Direct interactions will most likely limit and prevent access to subordinate individuals to resources. It can also happen in competitions for habitats and territories. Dominant individuals are the ones that succeed in this type of competition. It can be found in most bird species that actively defend their habitat during the seasons of breeding. They deny subordinates access to their nest and resources. This competition is called the inference competition. The effects of interspecific competition are usually asymmetrical or unequal. It can cause declines and increase in abundance of populations, but it usually depends on the type of interspecific utilized. When species share their resources, all individuals of that population may die from starvation. But when they compete and do not share resources, only one individual will survive and continue to live. Intraspecific competition over territory or habitat will affect the survivorship of future generations, whereas competition over food resources will affect the availability of future generations possible. Intraspecific competitions affects three major characteristics of an organism, which are its growth and development, mortality rate, and reproduction. First, Interspecific competition affects growth and development because its intensity is density dependent. Organisms with limited amount of resources will adapt and lessen their intake which slows their growth and development. It is called density dependent growth which is the result of an inverse relationship between population density and individual growth. This effect is found in both plant and animal populations. One of the scientists that did an experiment on this effect was J. N. Clackworthy of Oxford University where he examined the growth of white clover plants or trifolium repens. 
The plants would grow in pots with different densities in each pot. The experiment resulted in an inverse relationship between population density and the growth of plants. As the density of the individuals increases, the mean weight of the individual plant decreases. This is an effect of low resources and high population rates. Individuals are competing for these resources and end up with lessening their intake with stunts for growth and development. As density increases, the demand exceeds the supply of resources, resulting in declines in growth rate and plant size. Liu Wen Wang and his colleagues at Ohio University also experimented on this effect in the photosynthesis and growth of atriplex, prostrate, or the salt marsh spear leaved orate. The plants were grown in pots with different densities under controlled environment conditions. After four weeks, photosynthesis measurements were conducted and the plant's tissue dry weight leaf area, and plant height were recorded. They observed an inverse relationship between density and the plant growth of each individual. This effect wasn't only observed in plants, but also in animals. Rick Rilea of the University of Pittsburgh experimented on the populations of wood frog toadpoles or Rana sylvatica. He found a decrease in the average growth rate of each individual as the population density increases. This reduction in growth rate was accompanied by the changes in morphology and behavior. Surviving populations develop longer bodies, shorter tails, and a wider mouth. Therefore, competitive environments will result in population and adaptive morphological changes. Second, interspecific competition also influences mortality rates. This may sound morbid, but in reality, mortality increases the available resources for the surviving individuals, meaning there's one less individual to compete with, and also result in an increase of the size of the surviving individuals. This is called self-thinning. Self-thinning happens when there is a decrease in the population density but increase in the growth of the remaining individuals. It is widely observed in forest trees and sessile animals like barnacles and mussels, although recent studies have also observed it in mobile animals. Thomas Jenkins and his colleagues at the University of California studied the effects of population density on the growth of the mobile brown fish, trout, or salmotruta in the two stream ecosystems of Sierra Nevada Aquatic Research Laboratory. Results showed an inverse relationship between the density of the surviving brown trout and the average mass of the individuals. The population density decreased due to the lack of food resources. On the other hand, Ernst Keeley of the University of British Columbia experimented on the density-dependent growth and mortality in the populations of steelhead trout. Results showed decreasing growth and increasing mortality due to increased levels of food competition. Lastly, intraspecific competition can reduce fecundity. This competition affects the rate and timing of reproduction in different species. For instance, harp seals become sexually mature only when they reach 87% of their mature body weight, which is around 120 kilograms. The mean age of reproductive females increase as the weight gain reduces in a high population density, meaning there are more harp seal females giving birth at low population densities. This pattern can also be observed in some bird populations. Population densities were also observed to influence patterns of growth, maturity age, and reproduction in a fish population. There was a study conducted by Amy Schuler and her colleagues at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, where she experimented on the effects of the population density on the maturity and fecundity of wallies or sander vitreous in the Big Crooked Lake of Wisconsin in six years. They found a significant positive relationship between the age of reproduction and the population density. It's like the harp seal example earlier, when the maturity of females delay at high population density, egg production decreases with increasing population. This is also observed in some plant populations. Seed production in soybean plants are reduced when placed in a high density population. Also, the seed production of the annual herb glasswort or Salicornia europea also declines with the increasing density populations at coastal salt marshes. Intraspecific competition is a natural phenomenon that affects the growth and development, mortality rate, reproduction, and even physical characteristics of an organism and its population. The strength and ability of an individual organism in these interactions dictates whether they'll grow or die. So in effect, animals and plants are doing their best to survive and adapt to these changes. As time goes by, these competitions will further influence what will happen to the environment. It is important that we will not further harm these ecological process due to pollution and other man-made reasons. As humans, we should avoid further destroying these habitats of these animals and plants for it may cause them to become less and more endangered.